Mega Sableye and Turtonator are coming to Pokemon Go in the Dark Flames event. In this video I'm going to go through all the event details and I'm going to go through some tips to help you make the most out of the event. The event will run from June 29th at 10am till July 2nd at 8pm. For the Wild Encounters we've got Vulpix, Houndour, Pusheena, Galarian Zigzagoon, Carvana, Numal, Stunky, Litwick, Litten and the rare spawns Houndoom and Sableye. In one star raids we've got Sneasel, Darumaka, Scraggy and Dino. In 3 star raids we've got Alolan Marowak, Flareon, Umbreon and Turtonator which will release with its shiny available. In 5 star raids will be Heatran that will know the legacy move Magma Storm. Magma Storm is a fire type charge attack that has 65 power in trainer battles and 75 power in gyms and raids. And in mega raids we'll have Mega Sableye making its debut. Moving on to the event bonuses, for completing raids you will receive 25% increased XP, 3 additional candies and 1 additional XL candy for trainers at level 31 plus. Team Go Rocket Grunts that use dark and fire type Pokemon will be appearing more frequently in balloons and at stops. There will also be a branching timed research which will Will allow you to choose either dark or fire type increased incense spawns. From completing the research you'll get a premium battle pass, 15k XP and event themed encounters. Encounters from field research tasks will be Alolan Meowth, Grimer and Marowak, Magmar, Sneasel, Litwick and Turtonator. There will also be event themed collection challenges depending on your dark type or fire type choice in the branch timed research. The challenge will reward 100 Houndoom Mega Energy and 5000 XP. Moving on to the tips for the event, the notable wild encounters include Vulpix if you're going after Candy and Candy XL for Alola Ninetales, because Alola Ninetales is ranked 33 in the Great League in its shadow form and 40 in its regular form, and in the Ultra League it is ranked 39 in its shadow form and 82 in its regular form. Galarian Zigzagoon could be a good pick because Obstagoon is decent in PvP being ranked 69 in the Great League and 46 in the Ultra League. Carvana will be spawning and this could be one to go for because Sharpedo does have a Mega coming in the future, although at the moment it doesn't look like it will be particularly meta relevant with the movesets that it currently has. Likewise, Numal's evolution Camera Up will also have a Mega coming at some point so it could be worth picking up some of these if you haven't got any good ones. Litwick is worth catching because Chandelure is a top 5 Ghost type raid attacker, Houndoom is a good spawn to look out for because Mega Houndoom is a top 10 fire type raid attacker and the second best dark type raid attacker in the game. Additionally, Sableye is ranked 13 in the Great League but only in its purified form because it needs the move return. Could be worth picking up some Sableye to get XL candies to power up. In terms of Pokemon worth raiding, you could consider Sneasel because Weavile is a decent ice type raid attacker, especially in its shadow form. Darumaka could be worth it because Darmanitan is a decent fire type raid attacker and Galarian Darmanitan is a really strong ice type raid attacker so the candy could be worth it. And both of these do have Zen modes coming in the future that are even stronger. Scraggy is a good option for PvP because Scrafty is ranked 7 in the Great League and ranked 24 in the Ultra League. However, with the high IV floor from raids, you would need to trade with a good friend to get close to the best PvP IVs. But if you've got the raid passes, raiding it for XL Candy would definitely be worth it for the Ultra League. Dino is worth raiding, especially if you didn't do the community today because High Dragon is one of the best Dark type raid attackers and it is ranked 41 in the Master League. Umbreon is a good choice because it is ranked 32 in the Great League and 67 in the Ultra League. Turtonator will also be in raids but it might be worth trying to get it from Field Research instead because you could be using your raid passes on other Pokemon that are more worth it. Heatran will be in 5 star raids and with its new charge attack Magma Storm it will be a lot better than it is currently. So Heatran could be a more valuable raid target now. It's worth raiding enough Mega Sableye to evolve one for the Mega Dex, but other than that it's not really meta relevant so I wouldn't waste too many passes on this. With all of the bonuses for completing raids, it is well worth doing raids during this event if you're trying to get more XP, more candy and candy XL for certain Pokemon. Doing these raids will help you towards your Rising Star Platinum Medal, your Champion Platinum Medal and if you're doing Heatran raids, your Legend Medal. Dark and Fire type grunts will be appearing more frequently and out of these the Fire type grunt that says the line do you know how hot Pokemon Fire Breath can get will be the best grunt to go after because you could potentially get Shadow Torchic from them and Shadow Blaziken is a good Fire type raid attacker. Also getting the candy from the Torchic if you haven't got much candy is good for leveling up a Mega Blaziken because Mega Blaziken is one of the best raid attackers in the game. Choosing Fire or Dark type spawns from the branched timed research will also help you with the Kindler Platinum Medal or the Delinquent Platinum Medal depending on the type that you choose. Notable field research encounters include Litwick and Sneasel based off what I previously discussed. I would also recommend going after Turtonator in field research because from a raid it'll cost you a raid pass and as I said it's probably worth using your free daily raid pass on something else if you don't have any other raid passes. That's about it for this four day event in Pokemon Go. Let me know in the comments if you're going to be playing during this time and as always like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.